10.7 is about proof by induction. There are three steps to this process shown in the box. So let's do number one following these three steps. So step one, show that the statement is true for n equals one. So on the left side we have an arithmetic sequence because it's going up by six, five, then eleven, then seventeen, and we just keep going up until, well, it depends on what the n value is. So for step one, we need to show that the equation is true when n equals one. Okay, so when n equals one. Okay, if I plug in one right there, I get five. So I'm not going to get to eleven. The only number I'm going to have is five. Eleven would only be reached if n equals two, and we're not getting that far. So the left side is only one term, 5. Plugging in 1 to the right side, we get 5 equals 3 plus 2. 5 equals 5. And so the statement is true for n equals 1. Okay, step two is to assume the statement is true when n is some positive integer k. So step two is actually the easiest step because you're just making an assumption. So you're assuming the equation is true for some positive integer k. Okay, so step two, assume, and now you're just going to rewrite the equation, but instead of n, you're going to plug in k. So you're assuming this equation is true when k is a positive integer. And what's another word for positive integer? Natural number. So we need to specify that. We're assuming this is true where k is a natural number. So this notation, so what I wrote is k, and then the next symbol means is an element of and the capital N is natural numbers, so where k is an element of the natural numbers. So we assume this equation in red to be true. That's step two. Now step three involves... Step three involves using step two to prove that the equation will also work for a natural number k plus one. So we assume it's true for k, and then we try to show that it works for k plus 1 as well. So step 3, what you're trying to do is so you're basically rewriting the equation from step 2 but then you're going to take it one step further. So instead of plugging in k, I need to go a step further and plug in k plus 1. And my goal is for this to equal the right side with k plus 1 
plugged in. Okay, I'm going to simplify the right side. So this is going to become 3 times k squared plus 2k plus 1 plus 2k plus 2 3k squared plus 6k plus 3 plus 2k plus 2 equals 3k squared plus 8k plus 5. So my goal is to get the left side to equal that, or to show that the left side equals the right side. Okay. So from step 2, we established that this equals that. So what I'm going to do now is take this part and replace it with what we said or what we assumed to be true. We can replace the circled blue expression with 3k squared plus 2k. So that's what I'm going to do. Looking at step two, I know that the part I just circled is equal to 3k three, three squared plus 2k. And then I still have this bracketed part. I'm going to simplify the bracketed part as well. 6k plus 6, but then I subtract 1, so it's 6k plus 5. So this was from that, and then this is the bracketed part, simplified. So then I get 3k squared plus 8k plus 5. And now the left side and the right side are the same, so we're pretty much done. All right, so step 3. I forgot to write step 3. Step 3 is show... that, and I'm going to kind of change the wording, show that equation works for n equals k plus 1. Okay, and we've done that. So, in the book, they say this proves the conjecture. I'm going to show you what I learned in grad school. You can just do this symbol. And so it's a box with, with coloring inside. That basically means my proof is done. Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, step one. Step one is showing the equation works when n equals one. So when n equals one, we don't get very far on the left side. All we get is one squared. And we don't even get to two squared because that's what happens when n equals two. And then on the right side, we plug in one for n. So we get 1 equals 1 times 2 times 3 over 6. So we get 1 equals 1. So we say the statement is true for n equals 1. Okay, step two involves an assumption. So step two. And you rewrite the equation with k instead of n. 
So we're going to assume 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus all the way up to k squared. We're assuming that this equals k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all divided by 6. Okay, and then now we need to show that it works for k plus 1. Oh, and I forgot that I need to specify on step 2 that k is a natural number. Okay, back to step 3. So step three is show equation works for n equals k plus one. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the equation from step two. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus but I'm gonna take it a step further like we did on number 1 equals and then my goal is for the right side to have all the K's replaced with K plus 1 so the first K is gonna become K plus 1 the K plus 1 is going to become k plus 2 because it's k plus 1 plus 1 and then okay so I'm plugging in k plus 1 where the k is so if I double k plus 1 that becomes 2k plus 2 and then there's another one there so 2k plus 3 okay so if you plug in k plus 1 there you get 2k plus 2 plus another one so 2k plus 3. Okay, remember that we know that this equals that. So I'm going to replace this part with the circled part in red on the right. So that's going to become k. k plus 1. 2k plus 1 over 6 plus the uncircled part. And I'm trying to show that this equals k plus 1, k plus 2, 2k plus 3 over 6. All right, well, we're not too far away. I'm going to make common denominators on the left. So since that's over 6, we need this to be over 6. So I multiply by 6 over 6. And my goal is still k plus 1. All right. I don't want to write the right side over and over again. So I'm just going to play with the left side until I get it to equal the right side. So on top, we have to combine all this together. So we have So we have k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 plus 6 times k plus 1 squared all that over 6 
Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to factor to get it to look like the numerator on the right side. So I think the easiest way to factor might be to take out a k plus 1 from everything. So if I take out a k plus 1, I'm left with k times 2k plus 1 plus 6 times 1 of these k plus 1's. The squared is gone because I took out 1 of the k plus 1's. All that over 6. And so this becomes k plus 1. 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6 all over 6 so this becomes k plus 1 times 2k squared plus 7k plus 6 over 6 and now we could factor the trinomial on the right that becomes k plus 1 k 2k Okay, what are the factors? So, if I did the x factor, I'll do it down here. If I did the x factor, I'd get 12 and 7. So the numbers are 4 and 3. And I have to divide those by 2. So I would end up with k plus 2 and 2k plus 3, which I believe is exactly what we wanted. Let's check k plus 1, k plus 2, 2k plus 3. So finally, we're done with our proof. And the symbol to signify that you're done is a box and color it in. Okay, so to summarize, to prove something by induction, you show that it works when n equals 1, and then you assume it works for n equals k, and then you have to show that it works for n equals k plus 1. 